I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, Six Pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Samantha, once again, welcome back to another video. There's another paid request, this time from Smack It Down. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, topic, reaction, randomness, out of the blueness, re-review, review, whatever, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Down there. If not, no worries. But this is for the first Fast and Furious film. Which is funny, we watch this again after, what, nine movies now, and they said there's going to be just a 10, now they say it's going to be a 10 and 11, why don't you just say 13 and get over with, and 13, they'll be racing, I don't know, space aliens, fuck's sake. The alien will come down, and there'll be some problem, and there'll be some racing against space alien cars, whatever the shit, why don't you just do that for, anyway. This is so mundane, funny enough, compared to what happens nowadays with these movies. And that's why I'm watching. It's like, wow, it's such a different, weird thing to watch the first movie. Which I do like. I would say I liked it a little bit more since I first saw it. It was never one of those films I always oh, a favorite of mine. Even in the franchise, I would say 5, 6, and 2 are my top 3 favorites. And yeah, I actually like the sequel more. Because I like Tyrese and Paul Walker together fairly well. I think they worked well together. But this is pretty decent. I mean, it's pretty much a remake of Point Break. <laughs> Where you have the, the guy, younger guy, going undercover to try to become friends with this other guy. They become friends, ultimately one finds out the other's a cop, and instead of surfing, dealing with robberies, it's cars, and it deals with robberies. Racing. I will be honest, I like this more than Point Break. I never understood the love for Point Break. I'm sorry, if you like the film, that's cool. I love Keanu Reeves, Constantine, Speed, The Matrix films, John Wick films. I like Patrick Swayze. Red Dawn, Roadhouse, Love Uncommon Valor, Ghost. But Port Break, I just never understood the love because I didn't feel it had any action noteworthy, unless you like surfing or skydiving, I guess. I thought Tiana Reeves did a bad job acting wise, and I like Tiana Reeves, but I don't think he did a good job. I am an FBI agent. And I didn't buy the ending where, hey, you got my partner, Deary Busey, killed and murdered. Cold blood. Yay. Yeah, you go off and surf just for shits and giggles. It, it makes more sense here why Paul Walker lets Vin Diesel go. I thought it made much more sense. I thought the action, as mundane as it is compared to the Fast and Furious films now, uh, they're pretty fun to watch. 
and Paul Walker, Vin Diesel. Interesting to see him so early in their life and their career. I miss Paul Walker. That's a guy I grew to really like. He did a wonderful film called Hours, which I think is his best acting role. If you haven't seen Hours, check it out. That's a film where his wife dies in childbirth, but the child is born, but it's so weak, it has to be hooked up to machines. At the same time, this hurricane comes, and most of the staff leaves, so Paul Walker stays with his baby, and then has to keep turn on this re this generator and try to keep his baby alive while trying to get help. It's a really good film. Also, Brick Mansions, I did like. I did think he got better. Running Scared, that's another one I did enjoy. So sad that he passed away, and, and plus the way he did. And then Vin Diesel, I know he's playing the same character, Dom, this feels like a different performance, like a performance that's more emotional, and I do like Vin Diesel. I like him in Triple X. I like him for who he is, for what he is in these movies. Like I said, I like him, the big tough guy, the, the voice, your pitch black is great. But nowadays, as Dom, it feels more kind of... I don't want to say monotone, because I don't think he's boring. I know some people do, but... More of that deep voice. Here, it seemed more... Variety of... Of emotions. Like, more youthful, energetic. Maybe that's just me. And Vin Diesel's performance. Uh, this is directed by Rob Cohen. I know this film was made because there's an article about street racing, and so... This film was not the biggest of budgets, but it made it a good chunk of change. And then this one, Vin Diesel's like, I won't do sequels. That changed. Because he didn't do the sequel to Triple X, so they gave that to Ice Cube. He didn't do the sequel to this, so he had Too Fast, Too Furious with Paul Walker and Tyrese. Now, he better keep doing those sequels, because any other film Vin Diesel does flops. Last Witch Hunter flopped. Bloodshot flopped. Babylon AD flopped. Even, you know. Even when he came back to Riddick. In Riddick, it wasn't that good. And that's the thing. I like Vin Diesel, but he has one of the worst track records for action stars. I'm serious. If I'm saying like the top five action stars I like, but have the worst track record, he's one of them, Sally. And he just picks the... He's picking bad projects. Or he makes these films like Bloodshot could work, but it's just very forgettable film. Last Witch Hunter maybe could work, but again, like these forgettable movies. They're not even the worst movies ever. Well, Babylon AD Babylon AD is pretty fucking shitty. Hey, you want to see Children of Men, but if it's sucked, go watch Babylon AD. <laughs> no, nah, I just go rather watch Children of Men. It's a much better movie. With the tip similar plot, not the I was going to say the same, but it doesn't have the same plot, but it has similar. Anyway, back to this. Yeah, the the racing scenes, man, they they do seem so mundane. Because now we're gonna go into outer space, and we're gonna might as well go back in time. That'll be part eleven or part twelve, and then they'll actually race aliens in part thirteen. I mean, just now it's complete cartoon. While here was. This is like a documentary compared to that. I mean, Paul Walker's undercover. And there's people that go out and steal shit from semi-trucks. Hold them up, rob them. Try to find out who they are. Meanwhile, gets close with Vin Diesel's sister, played by Jordana Brewster. Seeing the, the racing culture. And, again, just interest, interesting to see, after nine films now, how this all began back in 2001. God, it's been so long. From you know, Michelle Rodriguez, like, everyone's so much younger, so much more youthful and energetic. You know, Michelle Rodriguez is a character going out with Vin Diesel's character. 
And there's a different vibe to the characters here compared to nowadays. Maybe that made sense because it's been 20 years now. 20 years. I mean, I didn't realize this. It's been 20 years since this film. This is 2021. This is 2001. 20 fucking years. Who would have thought that this would become one of the biggest action franchises? I never would have thought it. If anyone said they would, they they did the fucking lying. If they said, I saw it coming, I sure as fuck didn't. But it did, I mean. But I mean, even with this, it's a fun film, it's a straightforward film. You know, Rob Cohen is the director. Rob Cohen, he did Dragon the Bruce Lee story, he did Daylight with Sylvester Stallone. I think the last film he did was The Mummy 3, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. I wonder, maybe because those films bombed, like The Mummy 3. That's why they never brought Rob Cohen back to directing. They have brought other directors back. Like the one director who did Fast Five. That's the guy they use the most in these films. I think he did Fast and Furious 3, Tokyo Dread. I believe he did that. I can't remember the director's names, but as a watch, as it made me go, I wonder why they never brought Rob Cohen back for another film. I mean, maybe they thought, eh, The Mummy 3, I don't know, I'd, maybe it was his choice, maybe no one ever thought of it. With the racing scenes, the only thing I dislike is when they're in the car and they're going so fast. Outside, you have this fast speeding look that looks as if they're going in warp speed in fucking Star Trek. Uh, but other than that, for the most part, it's practical cars. Racing scenes are fine. A couple of decent flips like at the end. Nice car flip where the car flips and goes over the car. And you have this nice POV. It's supposed to be Paul Walker. But the character, he's driving. You see the car flip it over and go over him. It's a nice shot. A trailer shot they use at the end of the trailers for this film. I mean, story-wise, the bad guy is Rich Yoon. I knew he looked familiar. He would be the bad guy in... Die Another Day, the James Bond film, Olympus Has Fallen. We play a lot of other bad guys now that I think about it. I think he was the star of Alone in the Dark 2. <laughs> yes, there was a sequel to the Uwe Boll film. But Rick Yoon took over the character that Christian Slater played. It's like, wow, so Christian Slater's character turned Asian? Alone in the Dark 2. Guess it's trying to be like a reboot. Whatever. It still sucks. But I mean the whole culture. Cult, the whole culture. Subculture of cars. I'm not a car guy. And the fact that I don't know shit about cars. I'm stupid about cars. If you show me a car. I will know the make. The model. Maybe barely even know the color. I don't know shit about cars. But. I will say this did it in a way that was fast, it was fun. Title fits. And gave it a good pace. Where you had likable actors, you had a breezy pace, it didn't feel slow at all, it didn't feel boring at all. And aside from then, this weird swirl thing, like we're going. We're going so fast, we're going to go back in time. War speed, Mr. Sulu. Actually, seems worked well. Practical. You know, the way the characters interacted with each other to see how these characters began. Or Paul Walker's character didn't know. He knew about cars, but he would fuck up. Like he would use too much nitrous oxide and blow up his car. Almost had you. And then just like, oh, you never had me. You never had your car. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. And even... Now he... When he it seems like if he would say that line now, it'd be a little bit more stone-faced. But now, even when he says that, it's like... He has almost like a glimmer. 
You never had your car. Like, he, almost like a smile to him. I didn't, I don't know if that was just more youthful energy. If he knows this is the bread and butter. I gotta do this other Fast Fear. I gotta keep doing this. There's no other movie that made, makes money. Maybe there's something else to it. I don't know. But again, this is like one of his better performances as the Dom character. Even when they get to this place, because they do a racing bit. Tops are coming. Paul Walker saves Vin Diesel. They go back to his hideout. All the people are just partying. Finn's pissed. Like, where were you, you guys? Why do you bring the buster? Does that buster tip me out of handcuffs? I also, he seems like a rougher character. Like, more rough and tumble character. Like, he is a guy that you might see stab someone any minute now. Like, a little bit more rougher, dangerous character in this movie compared to the other ones. Other actors, Ted Levine. He's a cop that works with Paul Walker. Nice to see Ted Levine in there from the TV show Monk from a film I enjoy called The Mangler. He's most famous as Buffalo Bill and Silence, Silence of the Lambs. I forgot, I forgot Ted Levine was in this, so that was cool to see him in there. Ja Rule. Apparently, John Singleton wanted to use Ja Rule in the sequel in the same fashion that Ludacris was used. But Ja Rule, he wanted too much money, and... No, I don't even know if it was a money thing. Uh, no, maybe... It's kind of like two stories mixed in. It was a money thing, but also he's like, no, I want to be more of a serious actor. I don't want to just do these you know, Fast and Furious movies. And he fucked up badly, I'll say that, because look what happened with Ludacris. He did Too Fast, Too Furious. Came back in, what, five? Then yeah, like five, six, seven, eight, nine, then ten and eleven. Apparently it's going to be a ten and eleven now. I thought it was supposed to be a 9 and 10. Now it's a 10 and 11. What's that? It would be 11 and 12. Oh, why as we'll go to 13. Just lucky number 13. Fuck. It'll never end. Fast and Furious. It's just past its expiration date. I think a lot of people feel that way. I didn't even hate Fast and Furious 8 like other people did. But even I'm like, yeah, it's past its expiration date. But, I mean, if they make that much money, they don't keep going. I mean, they get some nice lines. I know people call them cheesy, but I like these lines. I didn't... If Don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile, winning is winning. Uh, hey, for those 10 seconds or less, I'm free. You get a little bit of Vin Diesel's backstory that he built this car with his dad and Detroit Muscle and... His dad died, was burning to death. So Vin Diesel got pissed and hit the guy that led to his dad's death. And you know, you can tell that he regrets that. But you can understand where he was coming from as well. See, stuff like this is why the ending makes more sense here than point break for me. Why and you know, Vin Diesel didn't get an innocent cop killed. Like Fucking Patrick Swayze did. And there's like no dialogue about that. But here, that doesn't happen. And even the ending, just the ending, I keep using the word mundane, not as a bad thing, but just spoiler alert for those who haven't seen the first Fast and Furious. Rick Yoon and his goon comes by, shoots one of Vin Diesel's friends because the guy raced Rick Yoon. Lost, but didn't want to give up his car. So Rick Yoon wants revenge for that. They chase after Rick Yoon. Vin Diesel knocks one guy off a motorcycle. Paul Walker shoots the other. Then the two of them race. Go by a train. Pass a train, I should say. Then Vin Diesel loses it, flips his Paul Walker lets him go. End the movie. I mean, wow. I mean, in a movie now, 
go to Fast and Furious 8 where it's in the fucking Arctic or Antarctic, what, you know, submarine and... Yeah, it's funny that like, you watch this as a fucking documentary now. And this is when Universal would do this stuff where it would give these collector's editions. Like this, you have some interviews, you have... Granted, from back in the day, even this stuff here where you'd have production notes, to learn how to open it. I'm trying to start their journey with an article written by Ken Lee for Vibe Magazine, Neil Moritz and Rob Cohen, along with the screenwriters, David Ayer had a hand in the script but you had also two other people on the script attended races documented the culture it's a hobby a lifestyle multicultural stretch from LA to the entire world via magazines websites slain with the innate human desire to test the limits Grossing over $145 million at the box office. Yeah, it was one of those surprise hits. Uh, the soundtrack, I wasn't really big on, to be honest. Like, the score, the soundtrack, eh, didn't do much for me. I guess that's one of the... Like, I haven't said a lot of bad things about it, because it... The film didn't really bother me much watching it again. Again... I'm not a fan of the music, you know, Ja Rule, Ketelata, I like Saliva, Clip Clip Boom, I like that song, Clip Clip Boom, it has the music video, I don't remember that being used much in the, in the, the movie, maybe I missed it or something, but. Yeah, I mean, if you like these actors, if you like a fast pace, and if you like fast cars, it's entertaining for what it is. And, you know, it's pretty straightforward for what it is. And it doesn't feel like a long movie. In fact, well, how long is this movie? I'm trying to remember. Because I watched this a couple days ago. I can't remember for certain. But it didn't feel long. And... It's also nice to see Paul Walker, because I miss that guy. Rest in peace, Paul Walker. So. I mean, that's a guy that when I first saw, I went, oh, what's the deal? He's a pretty boy. But he grew on me. He definitely grew on me, and I did think he got better as an actor. I really do. So. Rest in peace, Paul Walker. Rob Cohen, I thought he did fine, direction-wise. Uh, you have Matt Schultz as one of Vin Diesel's crew. He would pop up again later in... I think the last one he was in was 5. I believe it was 5. Jordana Brewster, Michelle Rodriguez, they do fine, in my opinion, for what they have to do. Rick Yoon, he was there as a villain. I forgot who the villain was in this movie, so it shows that he didn't leave a lasting impression for me, but honestly, not a lot of villains do in this franchise. See, in this franchise, I don't really remember the villains too much. It's more of the the over-the-top action and the, the main characters. Yeah, it's still a fun movie. Fun flip. So I don't know what else to say. Petering out here. Losing gas. Nitrous oxide spent. We will see you guys later. And have a good day. Bye bye.